Well, good morning, everybody. I am very excited. My name is Luke, and I am a pastor, teacher, and coach. I help successful managers and executives live out their faith every day in their life and in the marketplace. Thank you for joining us for podcast episode number one. I'm very excited. To, the title of today's show is Calling in Favor. Joining me today is a special guest, Pastor Jay Rogers. He is the senior pastor of Spirit of Life Fond du Lac. He's an ordained bishop in the Church of God. And uh, one pretty cool thing, he's my pastor. So, Pastor Jay, thank you very much for joining us today. How are you? I'm doing good, Luke. Awesome. So I got a couple of questions I thought to get us rolling. Uh, can you tell us what is your favorite book of the Bible and why? Well, one of my favorite books in the Bible is, is Psalms because I can go to Psalms and read through and have my, my own soul, my own spirit lifted up uh, through many of the chapters that is read. There's praise and glory uh, being given and, and done even in the midst of heartache and hardship and trials. So Psalms is one of my go-to books. My favorite scripture in, in the Bible is found in, in Joshua, where God says that he would never leave me nor forsake me. Christ also reminded us of that in the New Testament. So those are just a few of my favorites. Love it. I know one thing that we've talked about is Obviously, as a pastor, scripture is a very important part of your day-to-day -day life. Um, one thing that I think separates you from other, you know, ministers and people who are very active in their faith is your morning routine. Can you tell us a little bit about what you do in your morning routine? Well, one of the, the blessings that I have um, is that Annette and I, my wife, uh, God blessed me with a beautiful gorgeous, spirit-filled woman uh, 32 years ago. But e every morning we, we get up and we go through what is probably normal for most, getting up, putting coffee on, uh, setting the dogs outside and uh, taking and getting ready for, for our work here at, at the church. But one of the things that I prize is <clears throat> that there's not a morning goes by that we don't sit down and have morning devotions together. Mm -hmm. Read through a couple of our Jesus Calling uh, devotions. There's another one that she has been using on prayer. And we said after we read the devotions and we discuss it, it draws us closer together and gives us a better perspective for, for the day that we're going to face. Uh, and that is truly my best friend. And I'm thankful for her, but she's also a great blessing when it comes to my spiritual partner. That's one thing that we do as well, is that we pray for each other and we pray for our church, pray for those that are going through some of the heartaches that they face, some of the physical things that needs to be prayed over. Uh, and that's how we, we start our day seven days out of the week. I love it. I mean, that's a great model for anyone to follow. I wanted to talk about that because obviously there's the connection to God in the morning with getting in devotions, reading the scriptures, but I love how you focus on also connecting with your spouse. So often in life, I think one thing that gets a lot of people is life happens. The, the chaos of the day to day will just creep up and then all of a sudden the day's happening and you're like, wait a minute, I didn't even get prepped and ready. I haven't even had my coffee yet, but I love that every day. It's not even a question that you know you are in the word connecting to god connecting with your wife and i think connection is probably a word that i would use to describe you i think that's a superpower that you have that i've seen not only connected to the word and your spouse but everyone in the congregation and people that you are friends with and people that from churches you don't even you know attend anymore that you don't even pastor anymore you're still connected with them so can you tell us a little bit about how you stay connected? Obviously, you know, there's like text message and Facebook and, you know, all, all of that. You connect really well on the Sunday services with people. 
Can you tell us why connection is so important to you as a minister and someone living out their faith? Well, to explain that a little deeper on why I do what I do, I do it intentionally. Mm -hmm. uh, if God can keep count of the hairs on my head, I can keep involved with people that he's placed in my life. One of the purposes that I have in connection is to remind them that they're not alone. Mm. And as I've suffered through my own life, I can be in a room full of people and uh, I feel alone some days. So God placed it in my heart early on in, in ministry. And forgive me, I have a little bit of a tickle going on here. <clears throat> that through connection people know that you that you care mm -hmm. and i believe caring for one another is exactly what god called us to do uh scripturally and in, in a few songs that we've sung talks about they will know that we are christians by the love that we have and that's one for another that was one of the commissionings that was given christ said love one another as i have loved you and the connections that i do you know i reach out to people that have been a blessing to my life but i've also reached out to those that they really didn't want me to pastor them that that they uh, shattered our relationship or something took place that it became fractured not necessarily broken but fractured and and i still I still pastor what it was a few weeks ago in the middle of the night that God woke me up and, and he laid somebody on my heart that and I asked him, you know, I, I, I didn't want to pray. You know, I'll just be honest, you know, this individual really did me exceptionally, uh, my family, this church, exceptionally wrong. And I said, God, why did I have to? God Put in my spirit because they have no pastor. The pastor is a shepherd that comes in and tends to the flock. Uh, my intentions of connection is always to make sure everyone feels the love of Christ, not the love of, of a man, but the love of Christ, just reaching out, speaking into their lives, touching their lives. I, I'm a firm believer that it takes three touches, the spoken word, eye contact and even a physical touch on a shoulder or a hand uh, god has blessed many many times this pastor in knowing that someone feels the love of who christ is mm -hmm. that's powerful obviously i love your heart that's truly a heart to pastor people even if they don't you know necessarily reciprocate it's not always about that I love that you said, hey, you get woken up in the middle of the night. <laughs> Will you pray for them? Sometimes I feel like God does that to us because uh, there isn't anybody else. So it's not about like, well, I'll, I'll love you if you're good to me. There's not a conditional kind of love. Like, obviously, God loves us unconditionally. So we love other people, not because they love us, but because God loves us. So I, I love that. And I just wanted to highlight that you said the spoken word eye contact and a physical physical touch sometimes that's all it takes it doesn't have to be an hour it's just a moment of connection with somebody right i feel like that is such a key thing that i've seen with people who are walking in their calling is they just have the ability to be in the moment with people you know it's not always a, a pretense or a plan like you said you can just show up intentionally in the moment I'm not looking to get anything. I'm looking to give and just connect with people and love them where they're at and be in the moment. Um, that's, I think that's just a big indicator that you're walking in the calling that God has for you. So can you tell us a little bit about your calling into ministry, that story? Oh, yes. Uh, I was very young. I was turning a 14 and I was in the church that we attended for quite a few of my teenage years. And in the midst of a revival, God called me to, to be a pastor. And it wasn't instantaneously that I took on that role. I actually fought 
the thought of me ever being a pastor. Hmm. Um, I started up my companies. I worked. I spent most of my late 18 years into my 20s all the way up until I was 30 before I stepped into the calling. And it was after my mother passed away that I decided that I was going to go wholeheartedly into searching after what God would have me to do in the pastoral realm. So I've been very blessed in what I have done and just make a, a just a small statement. If God can use me, he can use anybody that will just become submissive and subjective to his call. And I'm thankful that he never stopped pursuing me. And I think that's one of the big, big things is God continues to pursue. And we walk away, just like in the prodigal son, we walk away. But our father's still out on the front porch looking to see if we're going to come home. And uh, when we do, he always greets us with a jubilation. Uh, that's a word we don't use very often anymore, but he was thrilled to see his prodigal son come home. And I know when I turned my heart back to God that uh, it brought a smile upon his face. I'm just thankful that I get to be used, that I get to be a part of what God's doing in this, in this crazy world that we're living in right now. Very true. I feel like that's a common theme for people who are going hard after God and seeking him with everything they got is that, you know, sometimes when the word is spoken over them, the calling is spoken. We always know that the word is a seed. It doesn't always happen that immediately, boom, they stepped into full-time oh, ministry, oh. super obedient to God and everything went perfect. Usually there's an adventurous story of things that happen in between. And I think that sometimes just because, you know, it's a seed of the word of God in your life. It takes time and it takes process to grow and germinate. And usually those challenges and adversity that challenge the, the growth is what makes that tree strong. So very cool. Amen. Amen. So you were called at the age of 14 in the midst of a revival. That's, you have so many great stories that I know we've talked about just in doing life together about, okay, once, you know, you're called by God, walking in what he's asked you to the best of your ability that God just supernaturally puts favor in your life. And one of my favorite stories is, um, it's kind of a funny story about how you're able to get flooring for a church for a couple of pizzas. So could you share that story with us? Yeah. Um, we were in Wichita, uh, one of the churches that we were privileged to pastor. It was Rolling Hills Church of God down in Wichita, Kansas, and we had the opportunity for some men to come up and to help do some remodels, and we were able to, to do all the flooring, and the initial flooring was all ceramic tiles, and I got those at a, an incredible uh, reduction in price. I actually paid 18 cents per tile uh, for the tiles. And in that, my give my wife some credit. Uh, my wife did about 80% of the grouting of close to 3,000 square feet of tile. So she's, she's always a worker, but, but we were blessed and we needed the mop board. And that's what you're referring to, uh, the mop board. And I went and, uh, to the wholesale place where we had made and made some great connections and and um, it was it was it was truly a, a god thing it wasn't a, a j thing it wasn't uh, anybody there it was truly a god situation we we bought tile that was normally three dollars and something a, a, a piece for 18 cents a piece and then i went back to see if i could find the uh, the mop board the vinyl that goes on the walls next to the wall and I went in and I was looking for four inch mop board in the color gray and the manager of the warehouse he says well 
can you use six inch? And he went, and got a forklift, well, well, got a driver, forklift driver brought it down from up above. And, and I said, well, yeah, six inch will work. And he, he said, okay. I said, well, how much is it gonna cost? He says, I'll just buy the crew pizzas and you can have it. So I went to Papa John's, giving Papa John's a, a little bit of a thank you here as well. And I told him, hey, I need half a dozen pizzas and I bought some soda and, and the guy asked me what it was for. And I told him and the manager at Papa John's gave me the pizzas. So for just a few 12 packs of, of soda, uh, we got, I don't know how much that would have been worth, uh, but God blessed us in that. And, and that was cool. That was another thing of how God's blessings will just chase you down yeah. to touch you. You know, God's always doing things greater than what we can ever imagine. And I get excited over that. Mm -hmm. I love that story. Just how one thing after another, it's like a trail of blessings and favor and just, again, oh, yeah. making real connections with people. You know, it's like, oh, that's so cool how God just does that. You have another story like that where you, where you were able to kind of get some favor to get a parking lot paved for a church too. <laughs> Can you tell us that? Oh yeah. Uh, you, when you think of what God does, it gets overwhelming. And, and from my heart to those that are watching and listening, uh, always believe that God can do that impossible. You know, what we think is impossible for us, God makes it possible. So I was there at the very first church I pastored, a little church in Auburn, Illinois, just south of Springfield, Illinois. And we went in and, and we saw God doing tremendous things there right after we got there. And it has nothing to do with me. To God be the glory. It was always about what God was speaking into our hearts. And I was walking around the building as I do even here at Spirit of Life and praying over things and and I saw one of the men out from the community one of the city workers and I went up and I asked him I said uh, <clears throat> what would it cost to fill this dish put a culvert in and fill this over and and he kind of estimated some cost he says but you would have to go to the city council and there's a city meeting here in a few weeks so I went before the church board and I said, this is what we would, I'd like to propose. I, I don't know what it's going to cost exactly, but he figured that it would be under a thousand dollars. And I went to the city council and the meeting and, and I'm sitting there and they're arguing over another piece of property, a 12 inch variance. And they're arguing for over an hour and, when they got done, the, the mayor was residing and he goes, you know, pastor, you've sat there patiently. What would you like uh, to propose to us? And, and being in those situations, being a former contractor, I started handing out what I was wanting before I ever went to the microphone. And by the time I got to the microphone, uh, Pastor Luke, the first man I handed it to said, didn't we do something like this for the Catholic church? And the last man I handed it to spoke up and says, yes, I think we did. So someone made a motion that they would do it for the Auburn uh, Living Waters Church at no cost to the church. It was passed and I was out and it was less than just, well, it was less than five minutes for sure. But the miracle was the next morning they showed up with over a quarter million dollars worth of equipment, all the culvert. And by that evening, we had another area of parking that we could put up to 11 or 12 cars in. The following Sunday, that was on a Tuesday, they did it on the following Sunday, our church doubled in size just simply because God provided us parking at no cost. So God's always going to be faithful, always going to be faithful to do those things. Mm -hmm. In that church, we saw great growth. We saw uh, tithe being broke uh, 
every every month for 13 months in a row. We saw attendance records get broke every month for 12 months in a row. We started with four people and, and uh, in January of of 98, we started in September of 96, and in January of 98, and to God be the glory, uh, we went from four people to full capacity of a building, and God was faithful through it all. When we came, the largest budget for the year, the income for the year was $13,000, and and in January of 1998, we had a budget of $125,000. Uh, and again, it has nothing to do with who I am, but to whom I belong. Because uh, God's always faithful. Amen. Absolutely. Well, I want to even go back just to that meeting where, you know, you're sitting there and I'm sure after listening to them argue for an hour about a 12-inch variance, I don't I think it'd be easy to just to get discouraged sitting there thinking, I have a pretty big ask. <laughs> and over this tiny little thing, there's this whole marathon debate going on. But I love that you still stood resilient. And so now if, if this is God's will, he's going to make a way. And uh, another thing I wanted to point out, obviously, there's the resilience and the attitude, but you were 100% prepped for that. You know, it wasn't like you just showed up and like, well, God, do your thing. But you showed up like, here's my proposal. I have paperwork and you had the whole thing ready and you were passing it out to every person along the way as you were on your way up. Um, preparation is such a key. I know we've talked about that, not just in prepping sermons as someone who's a ministry leader, but living a lifestyle where, hey, I'm ready for God to move. I'm ready for him to do things. So does that ring true for you? It is true. Um, teaching and training in ministerial development over the last 14, 15 years. Uh, I always taught that the five P's, uh, proper planning prevents poor performance. And um, God will do miracles, but God also expects us to do our part. And one thing that I know for sure, if we do our part, God is faithful to do his. Mm -hmm. So with proper planning, we find that we are there in the, well, not just in the planning, but in the purpose of what God's doing. You know, the old saying is you can't stand leaning on a shovel praying for a hole. You have to do something while you're there. And, uh, that's that's a fact right there. <laughs> yeah, I love that. That's so good. Well, and, you know, having that mindset, the mentality to be prepared, it's not just in the logistics of things. It's also in, I would say, your approach to, to ministry. That's something that we've talked about um, in how we present ourselves to newcomers to the church, to guests. You've, you've always talked about, like, we don't have, you know, people who just show up. We have guests that everything right. has been not only prayed over, but there's a plan and a preparation. And so when guests come into the house, they feel like a welcomed guest, not just like, oh, I'm a stranger or a newcomer, but everything has been prepped. Their experience from walking in the parking lot through the doors to the greeters, to the coffee house, to finding a seat with the ushers, everything is planned and prepared so that they have the best experience, not just with our church, but just, hey, is this what God is like? This, you know, being around other believers, you know, this is what that's like. So I, I love that like that, that. And that's something you said is kind of carried through your whole ministry journey that every church you've been to has had that mindset. And that's why every church is, you've been to has been known as a rapidly growing church. Can you talk a little bit about that? Well, again, Luke, uh, I have to give God all the credit. Uh, in the first church that I pastored, I had a, another pastor come to me, and, and he asked me what we were doing, and he asked what program I was using, and I was so green into being a senior pastor, and, and I give a lot of credit to the pastors that I had in my, in my past. Uh, matter of fact, my pastor now is 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 Terry Watson. He pastors a 
church down in northeastern Arkansas called The Rock. And, and he grew that church uh, with God's help from, from just a Bible study in the front room to a meeting in a garage all the way up to now they have like 1,500 plus members. Uh, but I learned from men, another great man in my life, uh, he's passed away, passed away on Christmas uh, morning uh, with a sermon in his hand to go to church. Uh, it was Jesse Wiggins, a great man of God. But they all, they all showed me on how to stay faithful through the processes and just listen to the voice of God. So this man came in, asked me, about what program I was using. And I told him I, I wasn't using a program. I was just praying and listening to God. And he got upset and he left. I went next door into the parsonage and I told him that. I said, I, I'm going to write a manual that every question that could be asked, the next page just simply says God. And, and God was faithful it, it, through it all. I remember one day at that church, I walked through and I had these blue three by five note cards. Don't know why they were blue, but they were blue. And, and I wrote things down on them and I would walk through the church and I would pray over them. And, and I had one note card on, on this old upright piano. And uh, it said, God send us a piano player. And as I was praying, God spoke into my heart. He said, you're not asking what I want. So I picked up the card and I walked back to my office and my office was just a small little corner room that was uh, you had to squeeze to get past the desk to get to the chair. Uh, but I picked up a, a marker, crossed out, send me a piano player. And I just wrote whatever God wants. I took it back out and I laid it on the piano. And within a short amount of time, I had, I had three individuals show up and, uh, some of them are not with us anymore, but three individuals showed up separately, not knowing the others were attending. And they all came in and what God blessed us with was the three main members of a group that toured uh, professionally for nine years, a group called Southern Cross. And that was our worship team. And God used cool. them for miraculous things we went from there we we took a church in northern illinois the rochelle uh, church of god and, and we saw great growth there not because of of who i was but again to whom i belong and i went i would leave the parsonage on a early of a morning and i would walk down to the town square and and I introduced myself. And then after I introduced myself, I spent time with, with store owners and, and those that was working in, in the stores. And we would just, we would have conversations and, and we saw the church grow. And I believe it was still about the connection, the family that we created uh, because every place we went, we, we were leaving family behind. And then when we left there and we went to Wichita, we were in Wichita for almost a decade. And from there we went to another place. It, it was it was a hard it was a hard it was a hard church, but we loved on people. The church grew, and we have pictures, literally, of where one side uh, filled up and over the front and. And it, it was a blessing. It, it was a blessing to see God work. And then we were called to come to Fond du Lac. And I didn't even know what a Fond du Lac was. I, I didn't know anybody up here. I didn't have any connections up here. But, but I know that when God brought us here, there was a purpose. And we went through a, a few years of, of, of heartache here, not not because God wasn't faithful. It was just that time that he was having his way. And uh, we're so thankful to be here now. And we call everyone that's a part of this church. We're blessed to call them brothers and sisters because they are our family. And it's a blessing to pastor them. And awesome. They do a tremendous job. You know, the, the church is one of the greatest 
churches, I believe, in the entire nation. And awesome. it's not because of me, but it's just simply because of who God is. Well, I want to thank you for joining me today. I just want to acknowledge you real quickly. Thank you for being my pastor. Thank you for being someone who's a person of integrity and faith and character and just an unshakable confidence and focus on God that no matter what happens or gets in the way, you're going to keep seeking him. So I thank you for being that in my life. And uh, thank you for joining me today. I'm hoping this will be the first of many times we get together. So uh, with that being said, thanks everyone for joining us today. Stay tuned. There's more to come. Uh, God bless you, everybody. Have a great day.